Mesa just recently before coming to the Gambia was in the uh, Hague uh, at the International Criminal Court uh, where he served as some um, co-lead counsel uh, of the uh, former Liberian President uh, Charles Taylor who was undergoing trial at the ICC. Uh, but then also we had all the cases that um, Mr. Esam Baifal and the, all the councils uh, have been um, looking at um, as far as uh, the IEC's, ICC's prosecutions um, are a concern and that would include uh, one in Kenya and then among, alongside in Sudan uh, among other countries. And then perhaps um, if you combine all these uh, experiences together, this wealth of experience, this is why ESA says uh, he always uh, leads when it comes to uh, taking part in activities based on his uh, wealth of experience. But I'd also mention that um, during his unveiling at the uh, American International University, that's where he unveiled his um, interest to run for president in the Gambia. He had outlined his programs and policies uh, that he intend to roll out when he becomes or when he is elected into office to serve as um, president of the Republic of the Gambia. Uh, that includes uh, looking at the health sector, uh, boosting the health sector, like he said, uh, the health sector's um, st current state uh, is not um, up to expectation and he intends to uh, boost this sector. We will talk about that um, extensively after the presentation of these uh, credentials. We can't hear uh, any uh, more discussions unfolding there. All the officials, the IEC officials are doing uh, is to uh, verify these documents, to look at them. Uh, we don't know what all the documents Mr. Esam Baifal had presented, but what we do know uh, is that um, the only two documents uh, we had of uh, is the uh, current and then uh, pass or expired passports to prove citizenship and then uh, that of uh, the copies of his uh, certificates and I bet that would be his academic uh, credentials. But back to his policies and programs, I had mentioned uh, the health sector. He also intends to look at the agriculture sector to mechanize it, but not only to mechanize it, based on uh, his um, statements at the American International University where his unveiling was done, he wants to mechanize the um, agriculture sector where the country can become food self-sufficient uh, because ESA believes the Gambia has all what it takes to feed itself and then to desist from uh, the uh, heavy importation of uh, food and then all the products from outside uh, the country. Uh, and also he intends to uh, safeguard the natural resources in his own words in the country and to take full uh, control of that uh, because he believes the Gambia is um, naturally endowed and then when these natural resources are safeguarded and protected uh, it will contribute immensely to the advancement and development uh, of the Gambia. Uh, and this is not uh, only what uh, Mr. Esa Mbaifal had said during that unveiling, and these are all part of his um, policies and uh, programs, but he had also uh, mentioned the fact that uh, he will uh, ensure that um, basic amenities just so, such as um, electricity, water supply, among others, uh, are decentralized because he said most of these um, developments are focused in urban areas and then uh, the rural uh, Gambia is neglected in this regard, in his own words. And then he intends to ensure that uh, communities, regions across the country benefit equally uh, from these um, uh, services uh, that are basic uh, human rights uh, that every uh, citizen in the Gambia should benefit from. So these are some of the uh, things Esa Mbaifahal intends to uh, look at when he uh, becomes president. And then um, I am sure in a moment we will get to hear a word from the desk uh, if you're just looking at your screens we can see the IEC chairman and then we can see the senior electoral officers um, trying to uh, look at the documents carefully uh, one after the other and then right after that um, SR is expected to uh, face the press uh, we've seen all the candidates not um, uh, given interviews at all uh, we are not 100% sure whether he will but in the event he does 
uh, the media, there is a formidable team of uh, media presence here at the IEC uh, who will be posing questions to the independent uh, presidential aspirant, Mr. Esam Baifal, to pose the uh, respective questions. But that would have to do with a um, lot of issues that they will be asking. And then uh, right after that, um, our correspondent uh, who is here with us, Aisutu Jata, will be uh, corresponding with us live uh, to bring us uh, up to date as to uh, what has been transpiring uh, over the desk there. these documents tendered by these respective candidates uh, uh, who have the interest to vie for the... Con annexed the asset declaration mm. in the affidavit. There is no better way of doing it as I know it as a lawyer. It's normal for legal practitioners to make, to depose to a document and then you attach the document that is being deposed to. Uh, but if the IEC prefers it a different way, yeah. we could do it differently. But strictly speaking, legally, this is correct. Much obliged, we would do as the IEC requires. And for those who are not opportune to be uh, watching the television at this time, uh, those who are listening to radio and that's outside of the IEC uh, building, we can see uh, supporters of Mr. Esa Mbaifal out there. This is a formidable team out there uh, come to accompany their presidential aspirant, uh, Mr. Esa Mbaifal, uh, who is interested in vying for uh, the presidency come uh, December 4th. And then this is actually what is transpiring outside there while the IEC IEC officials interface with uh, Mr. Fall to uh, look at his document uh, to verify them before they could confirm acceptance of this document pending uh, scrutiny and then finally uh, candidacy as uh, a candidate in the December 4th uh, presidential elections.